Butler, what's popular on the internet? How should I go? I go to the internet. Mm. Wrong. The correct answer was cats. Cats. The Felix the Cat video, Butler. Look how many views it got, Butler. We need cats, Butler. Cartoon cats, Butler. Ugh, but how do I incorporate a cat into my already wildly busy schedule? We are not getting it yet. But, Butler... Dude, when was the last time you saw the Milana Raptor? The what? What do you mean, the what? You took the soul to the gas station at one time. Butler, what are you, insane? Velociraptors are extinct. Well, if I can't get a cat, we're just gonna have to find another way to incorporate cats into the Hauntlich YouTube Internet Show Video Project Extravaganza. Say something. You won't. Cats! Everyone loves cats. I love cats. I love Felix the Cat. Truth be told, I wanted to do a Felix the Cat video games thing because I'm weird about Felix the Cat. But there's only like two, and one of them is good, yeah, but it's nothing worth writing home about, and the other one's just some throwaway on the Game Boy. Eh. But you know there is a wacky cartoon cat that did get a bunch of games. Garfield! Everybody knows about Garfield. I'm pretty sure Garfield is as recognizable as Mickey Mouse internationally by this point. Originally a comic strip by the legendary Jim Davis, Garfield spiraled completely out of control into a massive media empire. Toys, cartoons, movies, amusement parks, you name it, the Garf had it. And of course, that includes video games. Garfield hype peaked in about the mid-2000s or so with the release of the Garfield live-action movies. Since then, Garfield's kind of settled into his comfortable position as being the most recognizable cartoon cat. Sorry, Felix. The first ever Garfield game comes to us from the Apple II computer, back when Apple made computers and not consumer-grade spy gadgets. It's a trivia game! Or maybe a hangman game? I don't know, I didn't play it. I get it, though. How do you make a game about this? I need a Garfield game I can play on something a little less beige, though. Let us go back. Back in time. Back when Garf roamed the Earth. Back to the dreaded year of 1989. A week of Garfield on NES. Except, no, that's not what this game is called. The game is called Garfield no Ishukan, because this game never released outside of Japan. Didn't realize Japan were such big Garfield fans, hoarding this coveted game all to themselves. There he is. There's the man. There's Garfield, featuring his signature nub. He lost his hand in the Lasagna Wars of 1987. You show some respect. Ugh, oh, that, oh no, that's horrible. Oh lord, why is it like this? That is, without a doubt, the worst jumping animation I've ever seen. Just ever. Ugh, what is this game? What, did the artist not know what a cat looked like? Why is he skittering around like a bug? Experience the thrill of picking up images of coffee that appear inexplicably as you meander about John's house. Coffee gives Garfield power. Don't give your cat coffee. Experience the horror of Garfield touching a bug and wigging the fuck out. How shit am I supposed to get around this? I don't have an attack or anything. Get out of my way, you little bitch. Oh no, Garfield is dead! I've reached the end of the stage. How do I leave? I can't go back. I can't go forward. Let me out, John. Meow, John, meow, let me out. I'm on the table, John. The cat's on the table, John. For real though, is it broken? Is it, did I, did I do something wrong? Is this my eternal punishment? Just as Sisyphus rolls a stone up a hill for all of eternity, I am trapped in John's kitchen with nothing to do. Wow. Except for when the key just inexplicably appears. I'm just, I'm flabbergasted. I'm perturbed, perplexed, I'm grumpled. I'm just flat out borgledonged. I'm free, haha, <laughs> I'm... In the arms of the angel. One more honest try, shall we? Apparently the key appears if you jump in this specific spot in this specific way. What? All right, back outside again. There are many things outside that can harm a cat. Oh shit, a bird! This game sucked dick. In the mid 2000s, Garfield was all the fucking rage, man. Like I said before, this was the peak of Garfield's popularity and it was all because of this movie, Garfield, uh, the movie. This movie wanted Garfield to be cool and radical and way beyond extreme. This was Garfield's Sonic Adventure era, and he break dances. Oh my god, is this real? The Garf movie had a budget of about $50 million, and they made a holy shit, jeez, man. The critical reception for the film was... 
Fun fact, this number is inflated because meme lords give the movie five star ratings as a joke. World famous movie critic Roger Ebert gave this movie three stars and the Ebert seal of approval because he was like 150 years old by this point and when he saw Funny Cat on the screen he pointed and clapped. Yep, this is Garfield all right. Garfield the movie captures the elusive charm of the most egotistical character on the funny pages and drops him into a story that allows him to bask in his character flaws. That Garfield is revealed to be brave and conscientious after all will not surprise anyone, although it might embarrass him. Bro, it's just the Garf movie, can you calm down? To be fair, to be fair, it's not the worst movie I've ever seen. The CG Garfield is a little off-putting, especially considering none of the other animal characters are CG'd in the same way. It's not a terrible movie, but there's nothing particularly great about it. I think if you were a diehard Garfield fan, this would be a very pleasing movie to you because Garfield is there. Sorry, Roger Ebert, I didn't mean to go so hard on you there, you old fart. But this movie made a big old lasagna load of money, so of course, it was time for the video game tie-ins. And boy howdy, there were video game tie-ins. Why did I do that? The hero of our story is the now defunct publisher, The Game Factory, responsible for Garfield, A Tale of Two Kitties, Garfield's Nightmare, Garfield and His Nine Lives, and Garfield, The Search for Pookie. First up on our mid-2000s Garfield spirit journey is Garfield, The Search for Pookie. I am a big fan of the Game Boy Advance, but I will admit the GBA had a shitload of licensed shovelware. I've talked about the GBA Jurassic Park games before, but one of those was actually good. Will one of the Garf licensed games be good? Let's find out. I'm sure one of these games will be pleasantly surprising. Here we see a group of mean mice conspiring to steal Garfield's teddy bear, Pookie. A nice JPEG, guys. Love those artifacts. Crisp. He's gone. He was bear napped. I have to find him before nightfall, or he'll be lost forever and I'll be trapped in an eternal Monday. What? Why? Press the B button to make Garfield do the autism flap. Oh, what the fuck? That's not a platform. That's a hot dog. With my favorite condiment, transparency. Holy shit, this whole game is crusty as hell. Look at Garfield's sprite next to the mouse. How little of a shit could they have given when they made this? John's house is a complete disaster. This shit needs to be condemned. There's broken glass on the ground, piles of shit everywhere, strangely familiar bees infesting the place, oil on the countertops, what appears to be splooge on some surfaces. I think John needs an intervention yesterday. Grab a mouse, bring the mouse back to the cage, Repeat, each time you do this, it takes longer. Is this video games? I don't know if this is video games. All right, I got all the mice and stage two has the same music loop, what? I'm gonna be honest, I don't know if I have the mental fortitude for this. Stage three has the same music and the same gameplay actually. You hold right and jump constantly, then hold left and jump constantly, then rinse and repeat. In fact, this footage you're watching right here is me playing this game with my fucking eyes closed. What an absolute waste. But this is exactly what I mean when I use the term licensed shovelware. This game is the poster child for this shit. No effort, scuffed as hell, only just barely a functional enough game to justify selling it without risking a lawsuit. Garfield the Search for Pookie gets one lasagna out of five. Next up on our spirit journey is Garfield's Nine Lives. Collect the eggs. Okay. Already, this looks significantly better. It looks like a real game. But there's something about it you can't tell just from looking at it. And that's that it controls like shit. Garfield is slippery, but also stiff at the same time. Oh, shut up. He moves really fast on the ground and maintains that speed while jumping, unless you've only just started running or are jumping from a standstill. It's just... It's not good. A haunted house level? Okay. But, oh, oh, what's that? Mmm, I am jamming to that, that's great. Stage three really starts to kick you in the ass in a really unfair way. Look at this, I swear I'm not playing it up. Garfield just does not want to jump over this ring of fire. Can you blame him? Fire bad. It's in this stage I figure out that I can give enemies the people's elbow. Gonna turn that monkey's cranium into pudding. Kia! 
Okay. These controls make me feel like I'm in a mental ward. Please help. Help me, please. I require aid. I have fallen, and I cannot get up. These games are interesting compared to the Jurassic Park games. Those games had more substance, even the ones that weren't good. These games give you the entirety of their experience in the first stage. There's simply no reason to play these games. They don't offer you anything interesting to see or do. Whereas even the bad Jurassic Park licensed games, at the very least, served as decent sideshow attractions. We now fast forward to the next phase of the licensed game extravaganza. The next console generation up, the Nintendo DS. Now, the DS had its fair share of licensed shovelware as well, but not nearly as much as the GBA. First up is Garfield, A Tale of Two Kitties. Based on the sequel to the Garfield movie, Garfield 2 had its own little microcosm of licensed games. But we'll only talk about the Nintendo DS ones today. The Garfield sequel movie made a little bit less and cost a little bit more, and the general reception to the film was that, unlike the first Garfield film, which was a family film, Garfield 2 seemed to be explicitly made for little tiny babies. It's lasagna, not shish kebab. Haha, <laughs> Garfield is breakdancing. Look at the funny dog. Hee hee hoo. Some people liked it, though. I mean, just look at all those exclamation marks. Is, uh, is this a point-and-click adventure? Because, you know, I'm not knocking that. I just want to know. Why must Garfield scale such precarious heights, though? This seems pretty dangerous for this fat boy. Oh, Lord. Garfield's playing in traffic. Oh, God. Oh, heaven. Oh, the carnage. When a paw appears on the screen, you tap it on the touchscreen to go down instead of just, like, pushing down on the D-pad. They put a poster of the movie in the game based on the movie. I guess to remind me that Garfield exists? So far, this is a pretty by-the-numbers platformer. That really seems to be the Game Factory's MO. Make a really basic game, but also make it suck in some profound way. But not in such a profound way as to be particularly noteworthy. The kind of people who actually played these Garfield games were very likely very young children who didn't really get much of a choice in the games their parents bought them. I genuinely cannot imagine who the audience for this would have been otherwise. Holy shit, this is so treacherous. This, this is why you should not let your cats outside unsupervised. Really though, it's so weird because this Garfield is like, just a regular cat. Normal cat, regular, plain cat. This cat, cartoon cat, gets into silly cartoon mischief. So you can smash Tom's face and crack him over the head with a baseball bat and chop off his tail and blow him up because he's a cartoon cat. If Tom looked like this, that show would have been completely unwatchable. These situations stress me out because Garf here is just a regular old cat. When he takes damage, he makes like a stock stressed cat noise and God, I hate it. This cave level really cranks up the dickhead dial though. You have to sneak past these bats, but every time the bats are there, there's also something you can't sneak over. Like the first time the bats appear, the floor collapses. The second time, there's water. The third time, you have to jump. Why would you tell me I need to sneak and then subsequently make it impossible for me to do so, you dick? You know what? Fuck this. Fuck you. Fuck these nasty ass shovelware games. On the off chance that you weren't around for the bygone era of the Nintendo DS, I'll have you know that they typically sold these games for only slightly under the price of what I would refer to as real games. Like, you'd go to buy Pokemon Diamond and it'd be $40. Oh, but Garfield Tale of Two Kitties is only $30. What a steal! Miserly parents would buy this shit to save a quick buck instead of just buying the better games because they didn't actually love their children. I need a fucking drink. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention the cable is out. Yeah, the cable is out. I think the TV is broken. Butler, listen to me carefully. The cable is out. I also considered doing the where is my pipe bit. Here's Butler drawn as Garfield for that one. I should've just done that one. There's one more of these games. One more chance for the Game Factory to make a Garfield game that wasn't totally dog shit. Or I guess cat shit, Lamau. Garfield's Nightmare for the DS. This is your last chance, Game Factory. One of these has to be good, right? Or at least, at least decent. Okay, okay, okay. Maybe not decent. I will lower my expectations. Could one of these games be... Mid. In case you're wondering, the only thing Garfield's Nightmare on DS has in common with Garfield's Nightmare, the famous Dark Ride, is the name and the fact that Garfield is somehow involved. Yo, it's lasagna, not shish kebab. I think that burger might have been a bit too much. 
Burger? You know what? Garfield's a cat. He doesn't know what a burger looks like. You know, something's just occurred to me. In all of these games, we've been collecting hot dogs, pizza, donuts, eggs, fucking, uh, quiche? Coins? Do you notice something shockingly absent? Lasaga. Where the fuck is the lasagna? It's the one thing, guys. Lasagna. Garfield likes lasagna. He's the lasagna cat. He likes the lasagna. <laughs> oh my god, there are five stages in the first world in this castle world. That is too many, Garfield. How do you do it? I genuinely want to know. How do you make a boring video game? Do you have to set out with the goal of making the game boring on purpose? I could make a better Garfield game. Ask me to design a Garfield licensed game. My Garfield game would kick ass. Oh yeah, what would your Garfield game be about? It'd be better than this! All right, please. I could have beaten an entirely different game in the time it took for that to happen. You know what? Throw in the towel. Fuck it. I'm done. I'm done with you, Garfield. And I'm done with you, the Game Factory. Four games. Four Garfield games. All of them were terrible. And I mean it. They're terrible. Someone's gonna hop into my comments section and run their shitty little mouth. Ooh, this game was my childhood. Stop being so unfair. You're so mean. Wah, wah, wah. Shut the fuck up. You are human celery. You have no taste. You're like the kids whose favorite movie growing up was Bolt because it didn't have a villain in it because a villain would have made the movie too scary. These games are terrible because they're nothing. They're not fun enough to play sincerely. They're not bad enough to play ironically. They're not broken enough to be interesting. The best thing, the best thing you can say about the 2000s Garfield games is that they are, in fact, functional. If you bought one and put it into your Game Boy Advance or Nintendo DS and then turned this system on, you could, if you wanted to, play one of these games. These games exist because the world was thinking about Garfield and their wallets were lubed and ready to go for the lasagna feasting gremlin. Yet another thing we can blame on Bill Murray. So do you have any regrets? Garfield maybe. Isn't there one? One good Garfield game? One that exists regardless of whether or not it was trying to capitalize on the hype for another product? Well, yeah, actually. Garfield caught in the act for Sega Genesis. Developed by the same studio that brought us Echo the Dolphin and, uh, still Echo the Dolphin, man. We see Garfield sitting on the couch, watching his Tucker Carlson program. Exploding milk porn. Odie is a cunt, as is the huge, which causes Garfield to smash into the TV, which startles Odie so bad his ears become the wrong color. Garfield hurries to fix the TV, but alas, Garfield is a cat and cannot fix home appliances. Garfield's lackadaisical treatment of the television causes the TV devil to sprout from the depths of hell to punish him for his sloth. He voips Garf into the TV, which, I mean, look at it. It looks great. Garfield is unconcerned about his situation. Stage one is Slobula's Castle. Gross. They really wanted to impress me specifically, which is why they made the graveyard level the first one. Thanks, guys. The art in this game is just... Woo! Sheesh. This is a good-looking game, man. But it's not just that. Garfield's outfit changes based on the stage, and so do his weapons. The game handles well. The controls are nice and responsive. Honestly, I genuinely cannot believe it. I'm shocked. I'm shook. I'm shaken. Once again, though, I gotta fucking point out. Pizza. Burger. Am I going insane? Did I misremember the Garfield lasagna connection? Grab the remote to go to the boss fight, where it's Odie for some reason. Bats. Bats, there are bats here. Oh, God, there are bats. The TV demon is 3D, and it makes him look otherworldly compared to Garfield. And this game has soul. Stage two is a pirate stage. Garfield is a pirate. Arr. <laughs> I can cut that. The pirate level is also the jungle level for some reason. This jungle level, man. It looks really nice, and the song is catchy as hell. But for what this stage puts you through, it damn well better look and sound great. 
the whole jungle section you're trying to go up, and one screw-up dumps your sorry ass back down to the bottom to repeat the whole section all over again. Sabertooth Garf. Would someone kindly explain to me why I can't throw shit past the tree that's in the fucking background? Oh god. Oh no, Garfield's in the splooge caverns. Get out of there, Garfield! Oh god, imagine the smell. Don't touch that with your bare hands, Garfield. Oh no. Broccoli. This is cheese. Oh no, Garfield got into John's Benadryl again. The next stage is the Casablanca stage. They call it Casablanca. Nice. I just have no fucking clue where to go in this stage. I've been walking around in it for like 30 minutes completely aimlessly. It's part where the fuck do I go stage, part teleporting door maze stage that retro games love for some reason. I can't. I can't do it. And it's not this game's fault, but I am all garfed out. So I'm gonna use a password to skip this stage because my time is valuable. Oh yeah, passwords. Remember passwords? Did how old is my audience? Continuing your game from where you left off with a save file? What are you, a pussy? Like Garfield. Because he's a cat. The next stage is Ancient Egypt themed, which without a doubt is one of my favorite video game tropes. This stage has some light puzzle elements to it, but it seems like we've left the cheeky bullshit behind in the Casablanca stage. There's this one part where you have to land on a rock and ride it just long enough for it to build momentum to make a full rotation. This is neat. This was cool for a retro game. I like this. It was satisfying to get the timing right. The Sarcophagon is a good boss. It's got layers, and I like layers. Ride the paw, light the torch, ride the next paw, get up to Odie's face, and just clobber the shit out of him. Alright, I know from the password list that the Egypt stage was the last stage. Time to do the bonus level and fight the TV devil. Uh, so, uh, why did it take me back to the main menu? I, uh, did I do something wrong? The fuck happened? Is it, is it because I used a password? No, it can't be. It cannot be because I used a password, can it? The passwords are how you're intended to be able to pick up where you left off. Are you telling me you have to beat the entire game in one sitting in order to get to see the final boss? That's completely fucked up. Hey, butler! Yo, dog, what if the protagonist has to beat the entire game in one sitting to get to us? Then they'll just have to hold it! <laughs> <laughs> Fortunately, there are cheat codes, which just skip you forward one stage each time you enter it. Why this allows me to see the final boss, but using the completely legitimate password system doesn't, I'll never fucking understand. The final boss is a doozy, I love this. You damage him by moving these mirrors so his lasers bounce back and hit him, all the while dodging his attacks. By the end of it, he's going totally apeshit, not giving you any room to breathe, and fucking up even once causes you to fall further and further, meaning he can hit you more and more times. Really, just a great final boss. Good shit. I completely sincerely recommend you play this game. If you're a fan of retro platformers, Garfield will not disappoint you. I can say honestly, I would not have been upset renting this from Blockbuster. And hey, is that not the most glowing endorsement of a licensed game one can give? Well, Butler, I've decided. I don't think I want a cat. Good. I actually can't find the Milagraptor, so maybe we should get another pet. Velociraptor's dead, bro. Uh, yeah, man, he ate like 16 gas station taquitos and a middle-aged man. What'd you think was gonna happen? Why don't you make him into an undead raptor minion or something? Ah, that would have been cool. Why can't you? What do you mean? I did what you're supposed to do when your pet dies. I flushed him down the toilet. Don't we absolutely cannot get a cat? Huh. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for watching! You can catch me on my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash hauntlich where I'm going to be playing the Garf game. I stream Monday through Thursday around 1pm Eastern Time, so, you know, come watch it. Do it. <laughs>